What's up, Jeff? How you doing, buddy? You been up this neck of the woods recently? Get some stuff set up here so I can pass some jig. James Trevino, what's up, brother? How are you doing? Gonna tie up a few jigs tonight. Didn't come last week. I was busy last week, so I didn't get on live. But we're gonna we're gonna get on live tonight for a little bit. Gotta make up some hair ties for this upcoming tournament. And that's just what we're gonna do. How's y'all been? I know down here in Texas it is hot right now. Got me a new engine for my boat. Be working on getting that all situated and hooked up here after this tournament. Beast Outdoors, what's up, brother? Well, I didn't make it on live last week. I had a lot going on, so I figured I'd get on live tonight. Normal time. I don't have a lot to talk about, so I figured I'd tie up some jigs. Got upcoming tournament, Crappie Masters. East Texas Trail coming up this Saturday on Lake Somerville. And I hadn't fished in about three weeks. Last time I went over there was a Sunday. Took William and James. We brought home about 48 of them, I believe. Had 11.33 for our heaviest seven. And left them biting. You guys see that all right? Last Friday, caught four nice crappies around the docks. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, I imagine there's still some stragglers up in the shallow parts, but I hadn't been out. I'm, I haven't went fishing in a couple weeks now. I've been busy. But uh, I've been seeing all the other guides have been putting a hurting on them, so they're still biting really good. Mother Day yesterday, I didn't go out. I spent the day with the wife. And Saturday, I didn't go out. Hope everybody uh, got to spend some quality time with their other halves or their, their mothers. Fortunate, unfortunately, my mother's been gone for a long time. I spent all my precious time with my, my wife and kids. And man, I grilled up some steak. I'm here to tell you, ooh, it was good.
doing a little chartreuse. It's actually more of a yellow. Yellow tail, yellow head, black body. So that's sixteenth ounce. It's actually a pill head. I can put eyeballs on it if I want. I got lots of eyeballs. I just never really bother with them. These uh, these hooks here, these are sickle hooks. You get that to focus in really. These are really strong hooks. I'm not sure if these are steelhead hooks, but I got these jigs off of uh, one of the guys in the neighborhood had a bunch of them. But I like big hooks for crappie. You see, this is an underspin. This side's got an eye on it. The other side doesn't. I could put another one, but look at the size of that hook. I like using them big hooks. But being that it's an underspin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I mean, I have some blades. I could put them on there. But I'm not going to. So I'm just going to break that off. I do like these big hooks. When you hook them, you hook them good. And they're strong. The only problem is you get hooked up in the brush pile, you might as well forget it. You'd be scaring them all. <clears throat> Trying to get it out. These outdoors went fishing the other day and used the cotton candy jig. I tied pink, white, and blue. Worked awesome. Worked great. Well, that's awesome, Beast. It's always fun toying around with different colors and tying your own stuff. Hair ties or hand ties, hair ties, whatever you want to call them. They, uh, they are awesome. I love them. I've been using them a long time. You can't get them to bite it. Bite on these bad boys. I mean, they're not hungry. But then again, sometimes they want minnows. So you always got to have them options. When I turn them to fish, I'll take minnows as well. Because you just never know. Everybody I've talked to who's caught, they're not catching very big ones over there right now. They're thinking that the weight's going to be around 10 pounds. And granted, when I went three weeks ago, they still had plenty of eggs, and I had 11.33, and that was just a scouting trip. So I'm kind of hoping that uh, some of them big fish that I returned, I had two pounds, I had a 190-something. I had a couple of them that were up there, three or four pound and three quarters, and uh, one that was 198, and I released all of them, so who knows? It's a lot of pressure. They could be... Somebody could have caught them and took them home for dinner. This one I'm going to add a little black into the tail as well. A 
And then I'm going to add a little more of that chartreuse on top of that. It gives it like a little old lateral line, if you want to call it that. sweet then I got this shine here got a little pink a little yellow into it Add a little bit of that to it it's actually got kind of a pink yellow green got all kinds of colors kind of like heliographic graphic or whatever And like I said before, I put in there wrong. I like that look to that better. But uh, I always put these on the very top. That way, when it's swimming through the water, and them crappie looking up at it, they see that shine too. I ain't no pro at this, but they work. I caught a lot of crappie over the years on my hand ties. Ronnie Harris, how's it going, brother? Georgia, how's the weather out there? I bet you it's just as warm as it is here. It is smoking hot here. I'm not ready for that. I like that uh, winter time around here. Doing a little tying. Had to come live for y'all. Missed out last week. I was busy. Had to take my wife's vehicle to the shop. I just so happened to be at my normal going live time so sorry about that i apologize i apologize i hadn't gotten that video out yet i got a new one almost there been crazy busy Y'all been out tearing up the crappie? This side doesn't have an eyeball on it. I can put one on it. Got that shine. Got that little lateral line down the middle. I know it's coming in kind of blurry. That's a little better. They should tear it up. They should tear it up. Beast Outdoors, I used the sniping grade for the first time, and just like you said, it's very good, and I really like it. Awesome beast, yeah, it's uh, pretty phenomenal, man. I really like it as well. doesn't seem to tangle nearly as much as other braids I've used. Um, which size are you using, Beast? Did you go with the 20? Did you go with the Micro 10, which is, I believe, a four-strand? And then they have a new uh, the new 10-pound, which is an eight-strand. Um, 
the micro is awesome for casting uh it's uh great it's not as tough because it is only a four strand but i love it this video that i'm using or that i'm going to be putting out that i'm working on that's what i uh mostly use is this that uh micro braid i'm using my 7.2 of course my 12 footer as well in the video but uh staying back you know i tell everybody all the time stay back off those crappies you'll catch more <clears throat> if you can get them to bite when they're uh when you swim it by them if you can't that's a different story you can do a couple different things if they want it sitting vertical fish are real spooky but they have been out here on conroe and that is why i've been uh, staying back casting to them probably 25 30 35 sometimes even 50 feet away uh if they're they're hitting it when you're swimming it nice and slow by them awesome you know keep it right above them and just swim it by them but if they don't uh as spooky as they've been another thing you could do is with with my live scope i can see where the the fish are sitting down there this this week there uh the lat on that video i was in about 16 to 18 foot of water and the fish were holding anywhere from six to 12 foot so in that scenario if they don't want to hit it moving you could take a slip bobber cast it out past them you know past the tree reel it to where you're right over top of them and let that jig go right down there and you, you won't spook them that way it's a great method to uh catch those ones that don't want to don't want to chase it when you're swimming it by them and a lot of times them big ones don't want to they'll sit there but and they want a vertical but you move in too close to them they're not gonna bite so just a tip give it a try you guys and uh, i bet you increase the your catch rate because <clears throat> when them fish are tough biting and you know you're out there and you're watching them chase your bait and they won't hit it or they barely nudge it or guarantee you you're too close to them that's a big part of it sometimes it don't matter you can be right on top of them but for the most part i've noticed stay back anyway we got on here tony what's up man how you doing hope the wife's doing better and feeling better man beast outdoors got the 20. there you go that 20 is some some uh rugged rugged braid <clears throat> and i find that it doesn't tangle nearly as bad with wind knots and whatnot <clears throat> but i really like it i'm glad you tried it and you like it beast 10 pound with eight strand yeah i agree i uh i don't have that matt sent me uh <clears throat> uh 20 because that's what i that's what i wanted and he sent me a thing of 15 as well so i'm gonna put that 15 to the test here real soon Let's see here. my mouse died on me so I would pitch to them and as it was going over them they would dart up and nail it that's fun right there beast that's an absolute blast when they do that a lot of times <clears throat> especially this time of year they're pretty aggressive they get done with that spawn and uh they hungry i mean the trees load right back up with them and uh they hungry so it is an absolute blast i mean you get out there and you can pretty much swim it by them pretty quickly and they'll go whack it a lot of times but just letting it just letting it pendulum by them right over their heads is an awesome method as well but try that slip corking it'll work i'll even do that on a video for you guys i'm not much one to use corks and all that but sometimes i mean you got to do what you got to do to catch these fish. 
why we love casing them. You think you get them figured out, and there is no figuring them out because they change on you the next day. But we all up for that challenge, I think. That's why we love it so much. <clears throat> we'll do another one with a black stripe down it. Sometimes something as simple and little as that is what makes them want it. I'm running low on thread too. I'm going to have to light on this one. So I'm using bucktail. You can see bucktail for my tail section. And this here is actually a synthetic, which I'm putting in. I use it as well for a tail. But I'm uh, just using it to put that stripe down the middle on these ones. And then the water it gives it a little different presentation as well. Doesn't have to be much of a stripe. Just something that changes it up a little. However much you want to put on there, that's, that's your call. You want it to drop a lot slower, put a little bit more tail feather on it. <clears throat> put a little more fluffy of a Chanel. You want it to drop a little quicker, make it a little less. This one here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little different shine in it. You can see that. This is more or less a green. And it's however much you want. You can put one, two strands if you want. Me, I usually just snip off a bunch of them to make it nice and shiny. A little tiny bit of sunshine make that shine. Look like a shad. You know, shaking or whatever. Gets that shine off it, that might be what triggers them to hit. Lost my shell. There it is. And that's a glittery Chanel. Black, medium, with uh, some green green glitter in it. This vice is a Ronzetti. You say anybody was wondering, I got it at a yard sale for thirty dollars. So an older one. The Traveler T2002R. I mean, it literally came. Old timer had it, and it literally has the price list of parts and the part number and all the paperwork and everything else. Pretty cool. I keep it the whole thread and everything else. And I don't know what <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure what whip finisher this is, but I really like it. It also came in a yard sale deal. A lot of them have a spinner on them where the handle spins. I can't stand that. This one doesn't. I haven't seen another one like this, and I really, really like it. I know a few of you 
do tie. Yeah, it is a rotary vise. I just always do it by hand. I don't know. It's just the way I've always done it. I could spin it. It'd probably save me some of the Chanel material, but just never have. These edges go around four times. Pull it nice and tight. And I'll do it again. One, two, three, and four. Mm. I know everybody always busts me on my fingernails, but I can push that thread really nice and tight with my fingernails, my thumbnail. And my wife likes me to itch her back down there. There's a method to the madness, y'all. There's another one. And you can see it's got that little metal deal because it was, uh, I just got a whole bunch of these jigs from somebody real cheap. Awesome hooks. Made for uh, underspins. And I just break them off. Oh, let's see. Guys, my mouse died on me, so I'm going to see if I can scroll, scroll up with this laptop and get to these comments. Oh, yeah, sure can. Sackle Bandit, what is up? How you doing, brother? Beast Outdoors, is that bucktail yellow? Uh, it it kind of is. It's a chartreuse, but it's more of a bright chartreuse so it is yeah it is yellow i would call that one yellow i got lots of it and this here is my this is all my uh shine Oop. this thing's full of different uh shine tinsel whatever you want to call it different colors i'm loaded up with all that <sighs> And that's a nice one right there for a white pearl. Do a white jig and use that in there. It's got a pearl shine to it. <clears throat> Some silver. There's a nice chartreuse color one. We got all kinds of stuff. We even got some rubber. A bunch of rubber skirts too as well. Options. I say it all the time. Give yourself options. There's been times that some of the craziest stuff out there actually works when some of the normal stuff that you're confident in won't. So I do some off-the-wall stuff. Here's an example. This is like the first one I ever tried. This is off-the-wall for me. It's a, a Mr. Crappy Joker. With uh, I I tied it I tied a jig into it. And that's off the wall. That's off the rockers, man. But I tell you what, I've done a couple of them and they catch. You just never know what it's gonna take. What's up, Lamar? How's it going, brother? You ready for this weekend? I know I am. Doing a little time. Go make me some Lake Somerville colors. We're probably going to go up Friday. I take the day off. I'm going to go up there and tie a rope to your boat and just let you tow me around. <laughs> but now I got to go find a little bit. I haven't been there in three weeks. Last time we was up there, we we put a whack job on them called 1133. And uh, I'm sure they're a little bit lighter now. The eggs are dissolved. They're gone. So, But I'm thinking uh, weight-wise, it's probably going to be 10 and a half to 11 pounds. 
will get you up there. That's what I think. From what I've been hearing, that would be a pretty good weight. I could be wrong. Time me up a yellow and pink polka dot jig for this weekend. <laughs> yeah, right on. I believe uh, I believe your partner's got some jigs I actually won. I never win nothing. So hopefully I can uh, get a few of them that I won from them, and I'll take them out there and uh, use them on the water. But no one can. He'd probably keep them until after the tournament. <laughs> Or it'll give me some crazy oddball jigs and colors that hardly ever work. <laughs> oh, it's all in good fun. What's up, James? How's it going, brother? You all ready for this weekend? I know I know we I am. One thirty second ounce with a catfish hook. Man, I'm telling you what. You wanna see some hooks, Lamar? Tell you right now, I hate little hooks. I hate missing fish when I when they're hungry. So these bad boys right here. That's a small I mean that's a sixteenth. I'm not even sure what size these are. These are like probably one on or something. Normally I'll use a number a number two. That I get from Guthrie. Check out them bad boys. Just monsters, man. Some good, good sickle hooks. You don't usually miss them when they hit that. If they're being skittish, I'll use some little ones or light, light hitting, short striking. think sometimes and these got all underspin though so what I've been doing is I've just been if I want them with underspins then I'll put them on but typically I don't use underspins too often I'll just break them off like that let's see here Beast Outdoors, James is in the house. What up, D? Tomorrow, no baits until after I shine the first play. Oh, boy. Here we go. Talking smack, James. Chad Jock, what is up? Glad you're on here. Dark Horse Fishing Move. Why would they hand you our flag? <laughs> oh, yeah. The fun is starting. Lamar, we are fishing against some of the best out there. It's anyone's until the last team weighs in. That's for sure. JJ just put a hook in that. There are some big ones on Somerville that can eat it. That's right. I got the like button, did y'all? Yeah, hit that like button for me, y'all. Anyways, I have loaded all my gear three times now and still think I'm missing something. <laughs> uh, this one I think I'm going to do mostly chartreuse, maybe with a, a black tail because my thread, I have to change my thread. I'm about running low on black. Maybe I'll just do an all yellow. I'm sure I can do that. Big old hook. I'm going to make it a big old tail for them big old two and a half pound slabs. Nice big fat chunk of yellow. Being that it's a little bit I guess it's still a 16th. This one will, should drop nice and slow. I'm going to put a bunch of hair on it. It's even got a little brown in it. 
I'll put one little strand of black just like I had been. Then I'm going to do a chartreuse body. Just a little, not a lot. This gives it that little something different. Bucktail right on top. Looks like so. Nice little black stripe down the middle of that fish. Give him a little line. And you know what? That's that's pretty green. It doesn't look green in the camera, but it really is. This one here has got more yellow into it. We're going to make it nice and shiny. Make them nice and long too. Be amazed. Sometimes those three-inch long baits is what they want to. Options. Like I said, options. All right. Now we need a nice fluffy chartreuse or Chanel. Let's see here. Well, I'd say that's pretty fluffy, but I'm not sure I want to use that. Ooh, there we go. I got some yellow. That'll even be better. Bright yellow. Much better, thanks. That's awesome, Tony. You see, that's pretty yellow. It's not really as fluffy as I was intending, but... Big old hooks you can put a pretty good size body on them too. I always like to put a little glue in there. And when you wrap that up, that Chanel uh, ain't going anywhere. I don't have jigs come apart on me, i tell you that. Definitely not a chartreuse. This is a yellow. Maybe pretty awesome. A lot of times I'll put it on the thread too for the knot, but don't really need to.
their B lateral line jig. Let me see it's on both sides. It'd be pretty good. Just leave them in the fish cage where we stash them until about five minutes before we're headed to weigh in. Yeah, okay, James. Really though, ice and G juice will usually do the trick. Must have missed the comment. How do y'all keep your fish alive in 90 plus degree weather? Okay. Well, I'm going to give you a little tip, Sackalate. Do first thing you want to do when you get to the water <clears throat> that morning, fill your live well. That's when the water's the coolest. Do not recirculate it with lake water throughout the day. <clears throat> you get that coolest water. Um, I don't know if you have just a regular circulating pump where you're not pumping in from the lake, you know, and you keep adding fresh water because that's adding warmer water as the day goes on. So what I do is I'll plug off my my overflow, which lets the water go back out. And you know, so I'll plug that off, and I'll I'll fill my live well all the way up. Add my G juice. I'll have frozen water bottles in the cooler, and. You know, I have I have a one of them fish savers. It's just a pump that recirculates the water that's in the live well. It keeps oxygen in there. I also have an oxygen oxygenizer uh, in my live well as well. Um, just uh, keep that water cooler. Use frozen water bottles is the best. I mean, you can add ice if you do that. You really want to make sure you. Uh, use some G juice just to take away from the chlorine that's in the ice and uh, fish out to stay pretty healthy the biggest thing is when it's hot out a lot of times you catch you know you're, you're those bigger fish you're targeting are most likely going to be in deeper water and when you start pulling them up from deeper water they always want to belly up and you lie well so get yourself some uh you can get them weighted uh, clips, stick it on their bottom fin to hold them up, or you can fizz them. Um, just another option because that keeps the stress off of the fish quite a bit if, if they're sitting in there the way they're supposed to. When fish start laying in there like that, even though they're alive, it doesn't take long. Their eyes start glazing over, and they're, they're not going to make it. So you need to keep them upright, keep that water cool. And, uh, you know, just get some small little water bottles, fill them up with your tap water, freeze them. That's the best way to do it when it's, when it's really hot out. And, you know, that, that's one of the biggest keys to tournament fishing is, uh, keeping your fish alive and healthy. So, but yeah, don't ever, uh, I wouldn't pump that fresh water in once the heat of the day. It's not, it's never a good thing. Um. Just keep that water from the morning time. Keep it nice and cool. You won't have a problem with those fish dying. Let's see. We already put our fish in that cage. Don't mix ours up with yours. <laughs> you guys are something. Oh my goodness. You know Kenny is going to be sitting on that cage when he gets back in town. Y'all kill him here. 922 Crappy Barbecue. What's up, brother? How you doing? We just uh, <clears throat> talking crap, I guess. James is talking crap. <laughs> Tying some jigs. Getting ready for this tournament coming up. Fun time with a bunch of bunch of good good fishermen and a lot of a lot of fun we all have a good time no matter outcome what the outcome is 
<clears throat> it's all all about camaraderie and getting together. And it's an absolute blast. I'm gonna do a pink chartreuse body, that yellow body, with a pink tail. What do y'all think about that? And this is just a a uh, not even real. Not bucktail. Just gives it a little different action in that water. Except for I messed up already. Yes, I did. Bear with me, folks. Bear with me. ain't like they used to be, I'll tell you that. That's how I do it. Hoping we get a good turnout Saturday. Probably going to be the normal 10, 12 bolts, but maybe not. Frank told me a couple of locals are going to gonna enter it as well, so that'll be cool. I'm just kind of hoping the fish are where I left them. They probably won't be three weeks ago. So we're going to have to go do a little scouting Friday. Probably won't do much fishing, but at least find them. I know where I left a couple two-pounders. Kenny and Lamar probably already caught them or eaten them. With your clients. Let's see here. Want some pink shine. Pink shine. What's up, boy? Nothing. Want to tell everybody hi? Hi. They can't even see you. There you go. Hi, guys. <laughs> Almost bedtime, Buck. Mm -hmm. Looking for a nice pink shine. That's Chanel. I know I got some in here. Ooh, you know what? Man. Ah, never mind, y'all. We're going to do it. I know this is a good color on Somerville. I'm going to add this color to it. And yes, I will be making some. That I'm not going to expose on my channel. I'm going to put that blue on that pink. I think that's going to look really, really good. Mm -hmm. Love you too, bud. Good night. Have a good day at school tomorrow. Alrighty. pink body now. We're not. We're going to do this. The next one I might do a pink body though. Oh, that's sweet. Y'all know pink and black is one of my favorite colors, especially for dirty water. Boy, I'm thinking I like this pink, blue, and yellow. This is a smaller hook, so I'm not going to do such a big, long body. Y'all see I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on that, too. 
beds it right down and you're good. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a killer right here, y'all. I'm talking about Look at that one, y'all. That don't catch crappy. I don't know what's gonna. And that screen doesn't do this color justice. That's pretty. Mario, don't be telling Kenny about these now. Be telling about my my colors here. <laughs> uh, yeah, William had to go to bed. The ninja in the background. Oh yeah, yeah. My wife, the New York ninja. So what happened to spring weather? It went from cold to Africa hot in three weeks. Man, I know that's right. It is freaking insane. The job site that I'm working on is... We got a bunch of work on the third floor. Man, it is like a sauna in there. I walk in there about 20 pounds heavier than I walk out. It's that bad. But uh, we getting there. We getting done with it. So, I know Kenny's doing a deal with y'all. I'm not sure how how he's doing it, but I think it's, uh, he's going to give away some, some, uh, some hand ties for the closest to the weight for our tournament. So, I'm thinking maybe I can do the same thing. Whoever's closest, um, I must say comment in this video this live uh what you think james and my weight's gonna end up being and whoever's closest i'm gonna i'm gonna tie you up half a dozen of my hand ties specifically the color that catches the most fish uh come saturday how's that so that's all you gotta do just leave a comment in this video and uh what you think our total weight's gonna be. And I'm gonna give away next next uh, Sunday. Obviously I'm gonna go live at the weigh in as well. Uh, but next Sunday oh or Monday I'll come back live and we'll uh, announce the winners. Man, Beast, I, I think I would love to have that. That way to be pretty good over there right now. Man, that's what I'm talking about, 922. Y'all got faith in me. You got faith in me and James. I'll tell you right now, I think if we can get 1275, my friend, we're going to have that first place flag. I do have to say, though, we are starting to click pretty good as a team, so things are going to start getting interesting for us, I'm, I'm sure of it. But, uh, yeah, anyways, I got a 90 horse I'm putting on the old tracker after this tournament. It's a 96 Mercury. It's actually, I don't know, y'all going to probably shun me for it, but it's a 
It's a Mercury Force. It's a 96, but I got a really good deal. Um, I have to rebuild the lower unit, but the thing runs very good. And, uh, it's going to push that tracker a little bit faster than that 60 horse. So I got the 60 horse sold already to somebody uh, as soon as I get that 90 put on. So buy extra parts. Yeah, I know. I know that's right. Oh, yeah, for sure, Lamar. Definitely. What you got on your boat? I never noticed your horsepower. I know you got that V boat, which is really nice. That's all I used to run, man. I'm from New York, and that's what we ran was them nice V, v boats. Is that a pro guide or something? I think that's what you got. 60 horse, maybe? Yeah, right now I can do with James all of our gear. We can we can hit like 31, 32. By myself, I'm 33, 34 sometimes. So that 90 horse I think is gonna really help out. Maybe get us up into the get us close to 40 or who knows. 60, but mine is underpowered. Yeah, I know that's right. Yeah, mine's underpowered too. Uh, the last guided trip I had. We went out, and uh, I had three in myself. And, man, when we come back, of course, we loaded the live wells. You know, both live wells had a ton of fish in them, uh, water and whatnot. Man, I had a hard time with the wind trying to even plane out. And at 60, was laboring hardcore. I'm like, you know what? I got to get a bigger engine. So I went on the mission, and... Uh, I'm not a huge force fan, but it is a later model. It is a 96, and it is made by Mercury. Um, it's not oil injected like my, my Bigfoot is, which is a 94 engine. Um, but I don't mind mixing gas. Shoot, that's what I did growing up. And, uh, man, I, I really think it's going to be a game changer for sure. 922 crappy barbecue 115 yamaha two cycle that's nice that's nice i almost bought a 115 mercury but the guy uh the guy uh ended up selling it the night before i was supposed to go down and meet him which was kind of messed up deal seemed a little shady anyway and i went and looked at an old an 01 uh, Mercury Optimax 135. And, man, that thing was giant. James and I went and looked at that. Fuel injected. And uh, I was like, man, the boat will probably sink. We put that on there. I put some flotation pods on the back and everything else. And, uh, almost, almost got that one, but it needed a little bit more. At least this one will bolt right up. My wire harness, my controls, everything hooked right to it. It'll be quick. I could have it going, and we could be using it in this tournament, but it's just not going to happen because I don't have the lower unit rebuilt yet. But it's going to be a game changer. Only problem with these pro crappies, it's only got 11 gallon tank, so I'm gonna I'm gonna incorporate a bigger tank into it just because. And then I think, man, I'm going to have the ultimate little aluminum boat for these tournaments. A lot of people don't like aluminum because the wind blows them around. They're noisy, boat slap and all that. That's all I know. That's all I know. And uh, I know I can catch the fish. So. But, guys, I'm not going to stay on here too much longer. We've been on here just about an hour now tied up a few few jigs this one right here is really man i have a feeling this one right here might just get me big fish come saturday I mean, look at that thing you tell me a crap you ain't gonna want to eat that thing whoo doggy if i was a crappy i'd eat it i'd be i'd be gobbling that thing right up 
Of course, you know the old chartreuse, that lateral line. So I tied up a few of them for y'all. Ain't nothing special. I ain't no professional. Never claim to be. Don't want to be. But remember, leave a leave a comment on what you think our weight is, and I'm gonna send you a half dozen jig heads or jigs, my own hand ties, which I don't sell anymore. I used to sell them. I couldn't keep up, and not doing that no more. So I just do them for myself and some friends and you guys occasionally on the channel. So. We would have been popping movies. Let's see. I got a 60 horse 2, way underpowered. I thought about putting a 90 on mine as well. I need more room up front, so I'm buying a new boat after the turnings are done. I know that's right. I'm going to wait until I get my truck paid off. That's been my goal. As soon as that's paid off. I mean, I don't really want to have a note for a boat. but Man, the tournaments that I fish... I mean, I really, really think I want to go. I do want to go to a bass boat, a fiberglass, a little heavier, bigger, give us more room, bigger engine so I can get to my spots quicker. I mean, we fished some pretty big tournaments in the last, you know, this year not so much, but last year James and I have been, we, we, we went out there, you know, we fished most of the CATs against a lot of really good fishermen. Uh, we fished uh, Wally Marshall's Invitational Qualifier in Texoma. We fished the Wally Marshall Invitational on the Red River, which that river beat my boat up good, man. The brand new prop turned it into scrap metal pretty much. But yeah, we we fished, we went all over and fished. We fished Missouri. We fished Oklahoma, we fished, you know, a lot of different places, and a new boat is definitely in the works at some point, but for now, I'm going to use that tracker, it's set up great with the electronics, uh, we're comfortable in it, and uh, we'll keep rolling with it, but alright guys, yeah, make sure you leave comments, I'm going to come back through here, check the comments, write down what y'all, uh, guest and uh whoever's closest at uh saturday's weigh-in i believe the weigh-in is going to be a, a little bit later because the ramp itself we can't get into until an hour later good normal or something like that so awesome i like seeing them big weights you guys are going to make me work hard just to try and get to those but uh y'all have a good week I am going to have a video out here in the next day or two. I'm almost done with it. It's just me, myself, one man limit in a few hours. I'm going to try and just kind of compact it all so it's going to be some catches. I do, when I'm by myself out there, I do a lot of talking to the camera, so it should be a pretty good one. If it's too long, then I'll just split it up into a two part video. But, uh, y'all have a blessed week and uh, be safe out there and, uh, Hope to see you guys at the weigh-in. I'm alive. I'll uh, I'll be going live at the weigh-in, so I'll try and get a notification out on Facebook as well that I'm going live. Uh, that should be Saturday. It's either gonna be four or five for the weigh-in. I'm not 100% sure. I know it got changed. So appreciate you guys watching tonight. And uh, Lamar, we'll see you Saturday, brother. Might even see a Friday because I know we're going to be there doing a little, you know, got to do a little recon. Got to find yours and Kenny spots. <laughs> all in fun, man. All in fun. But uh, y'all have a blessed week and we shall see you next Monday live.